I am a victim of workplace violence, and I am here today to tell my story. On April 10th, 2015, I personally experienced an act of violence while caring for a cardiac intensive care patient. I had arrived early from my shift at 11 p.m and was told by the charge nurse that I was chosen to care for a patient because his father was experienced intense anger over the diagnosis and prognosis of his son. A code safe was called, which I've included in your packet so you can understand what I'm talking about when I say a code safe, which is our current violence prevention program that we're using. It had been called earlier in the day when the patient was on the oncology unit because of the father's threatening behavior toward a physician and verbal abuse toward the nurses. I was informed that our nursing management said that the problems had all resolved and they had spoken to each other prior to the patient coming to our unit. When I arrived in the room, the father was pacing back and forth, talking very fast about his dissatisfaction. He was using profanities loudly and the nurse caring for the patient was trying to de-escalate the situation. I calmly entered the room and introduced myself and told the family that I would be taking over the care at 11 p.m. The nurse left the room to get the patient's pain medicine because he was in excruciating pain and the father at that time was trying to control the pain medication being given at all. But we needed to treat this patient. She left the room, and I was at the bedside with the father. He had pulled the breathing mask off to give the patient a sip of water. At that time, he said, don't touch him. And I said, I'm very sorry. But when he was struggling to get the mask on, his hands were shaking. So I tried to help him to put all the tape that he had put on to help him put it back. I was trying to gain his trust, and at that point, he abruptly pulled a knife from behind me up to where my hands were, a 10-inch buck knife with a very large blade, and said, don't touch it, I'm going to fix it with this. At that time, I froze. I felt faint. I was overcome with fear. I felt at that moment, if I didn't say the right thing, he was going to stab me. I could have never imagined having that kind of weapon in the intensive care unit at the bedside to use for any reason. I asked him three times to put the knife down, trying to move slowly out of the room because I didn't know if I would make it out of the room. Also, the patient's roommate slash friend was there, and he yelled at him as well to put the knife down. I was lucky I, I did get out of the room. We called a code safe again. The nurse administrators arrived first. The nurse in charge read the previous code safe that said, which we weren't aware of, do not turn your back on the father. Two nursing personnel in the room at all times, which we were unaware of any of these instructions, which was part of our violence program. Four securities came to the scene, two nurse administrators. We locked down our unit because we had visualized something under his sweater that we didn't know if it was another weapon. They called the Boston police. The Boston police came to the scene. We were barricaded in the rooms. They escorted the men out of the building. The security officers told me that they confiscated a knife from the father. As if the incident itself was not disturbing enough, what happened next was equally concerning. And these are the things that I think a bill being passed for violence prevention, these would have been avoided. The wrong knife was confiscated that night. 
The knife confiscated was a Swiss Army knife with a two and a half inch blade, not the 10 inch buck knife that I witnessed. The father was led back into the hospital the next morning after being patted down and reportedly showed remorse. Even though a security guard was present outside the room, he continued to abuse nurses in a threatening way. He was reprimanded by a physician. He still wasn't taken out. I was supposed to come back into work and they didn't tell me he was there. No one warned me. So I didn't come into work. There was, I was, I contacted the district attorney's <coughs> victim's <coughs> advocate department and they told me to come and add an addendum onto the police report, which I did. When I got to the police station, there was no police report filed. There was no record of the police coming to the Brigham that night. And there were three police officers there. OSHA called me to interview me about the security issues of the hospital. And they told me that they didn't want to put my name on it because they didn't want me to get in trouble. I find that shocking. I was interviewed as part of an investigation by Brigham and Women's Hospital a month later in May. I met with Boston police detectives and read the Brigham and Women's Hospital security report which corroborated the events of that night and the events after the events and many of my colleagues are here that also were there. I was out of work six weeks on workers comp being treated with trauma and severe anxiety that this man would come back because that's how his mental um, state made me fail because he was so threatening. I've never met anyone like this in my whole life. The thing with me is the fact remains that the knife was still in the room. The real knife that he used with me was there and he could have used it, but we did have security at the door. He wanted to take his deceased son home in the car. He was threatening talking about me as he was leaving, so I had fear. These events collectively have affected me deeply. <laughs> if healthcare providers cannot be kept safe by appropriate security policies and procedures, how can our patients be safe? Unfortunately, my, not, my story is not the only one of violence at the Brigham, it happens all the time. The emergency room says it happens every day. These things need to be dealt with. After the death of Dr. Michael Davidson, who was a colleague of ours, we mourned the loss of this wonderfully talented and generous doctor, while also wondering how could this be prevented? We will never know that answer maybe, but don't we want to try everything possible to prevent this kind of tragedy? I was just a lucky one. I don't believe this is an exaggeration of the facts we now know to be true. We need this legislation because hospitals are not taking the initiative to put into basic policies, procedures, and plans to prevent workplace violence and the ones that they have, they're not following. I believe with all my heart that this bill being passed will absolutely save lives. And that would be a win-win solution for us all. Again, thank you for your testimony and, and 